So the last one I did was in uh, Thailand, Bangkok. So this one is going to about, be about uh, working as an architect in Australia. I'm going to talk about like first impressions arriving in Australia, finding a job in Australia, work life and money, comparing it to the UK and stuff like that and Thailand, uh, visas, getting registered as an architect. That was a friggin' difficult time and why I left Australia. And at the end, actually, I just thought, because the last podcast I did, I talked about Thailand and Bangkok, but at the end, I didn't say anything about lessons learned and advice and stuff. So I'll try and add that in at the end there. So when I first got to Australia, right, yes, yeah, so I went to, so I left, it's the previous podcast, I said I left um, Bangkok, arrived in um, Perth. It was Perth, Australia, Western Australia. I applied for a migration visa, permanent immigration visa to live in Australia. But while that was pending, I applied for a, a holiday working visa. Previously, before I left the UK, I, I went on holiday just for three weeks. I spent one week in Melbourne, one week, week in Sydney, one week in Brisbane and around the coast that area as well went to all those places and i wasn't quite sure uh, went on holiday i think sydney was the best one i didn't like melbourne at all really it was like nothing iconic about it the weather was a bit shitty melbourne was just i don't know there was nothing special about it it was just like it reminded me a lot about Van vancouver a bit vancouver's nice had the mountains and stuff but melbourne there was nothing like i couldn't see anything there that was like everything was the same it's like nothing special about it you could okay they had like beautiful beaches and everything but they were they were miles away you had to drive to them um well they had some beaches in the city and stuff so personally i didn't like melbourne that much and then brisbane was even worse um there was like buses everywhere you had to get buses everywhere there's no like no other transport it was like very similar to the uk so i didn't much like that much i went to byron bay which was really nice that's like a hip beach area but that's not some place you want to work I was looking for a place to live and Sydney was fantastic but that, that just had the wow factor but it wasn't really a place to live I didn't think because it was it's just too expensive and too compact this the wow factor was there it was fantastic Sydney but um I, I just thought like I don't think it's feasible living here because it's too expensive everyone's saying it's too expensive so I couldn't decide where to go when I went back to the UK so when I was in Bangkok I had a friend English friend who moved to Perth and he told me it was, it was great because he'd been to those other cities as well I met up with him when I went to those other cities he had a cousin or something in Perth and he was staying there and he also got a holiday working visa or something so he said come over to Perth and I'll um, stay with me until you find a job so I left Bangkok and I went there he wasn't there I was staying for his his girlfriend or something for a while so I landed in Perth and it was night time so I didn't really um, see it much it was very quiet at night time and then the next day I think Scarborough Beach area which is like the surf area of Perth so it's not like Western Australia so it was very like it's like a mini Los Angeles it has a large car culture and west coast is um complete beach so it's quite nice it's very quiet though so uh, next day I went to Scarborough Beach and it's yeah it was like quite peaceful and relaxed it was nice it's very clean it's, there's few people on the beach then I went to like a bar afterwards it's just so quiet there's no one nothing going on really um, you'd be surprised it's like Scarborough Beach I thought it was a big thing but it, there was nothing much going on like um, at night time especially I went to this the only bar I could find and it was completely dead it's, it's, that was the first couple of days it was like a bit disappointing and then um, went to the city the next few days into the Perth city and I went to Hayes Montrose you know that agency that gets you architects of jobs so I started looking for a job first lady there in the queue she was saying I hate coming into the city with a vengeance it's, it's like weird like everyone hate it's like got the impression that no one liked coming to the city they all lived on the outskirts in these quiet sub suburb areas or near the beach or something and the city was like this place you kind of have to go to uh, got that impression but walking around the town it was very much like the UK it's the first thing reminded me it's like so much like the UK the city centre C CBD they called it central business district it was like the 
It's very similar to the... <laughs> that's all I can say. The shops and stuff are the same. Um, they had good pu- public transport there, but it didn't go to the suburbs very well. You'd get a... They have like a sky train, a train, which is like a metro thing. And then you'd definitely get a bus, which was a pain. So the metro thing was good, but it didn't go... It wasn't that developed that much. That was Perth, really. Okay, But the beach was really nice. The best thing about it was like... There's a West Coast beach and you get the sunset there every night. That's the best thing about it. And that was first impressions. But later on, like years later, when I was in Tanzania now, I went to Los Angeles on holiday and so much similarities between Perth and Los Angeles. It's unbelievable. Um, even the airport is the designed the same. You kind of go in. I just remember I had this long drop-off point. It's the same design as Los Angeles airport. And then they have the West Coast, the car culture, like I said before. And the city thing was like, like cities kind of separated. Apart from similar things to the UK, they had um, the beach, is fantastic. The weather, like that's what I'm saying, like the weather is not as great as everyone makes out. Um, even when I was in um, S- Sydney and Melbourne is pretty bad. Um, it rains a lot. Uh, the weather's not that great. Uh, Sydney is getting worse now as well as a lot of rain but like Western Australia was supposed to be um, really good weather but it, like a lot of the time of the year it's actually pretty cold um, uh, especially in the mornings going to work it's had that UK vibe oh god it's still freezing going to work so it's, it doesn't stay hot throughout the whole year they have proper seasons you still get winter it's pretty cold autumn and summer so it's not not warm all the time they make out um australia's warm all the time but it's kind of a bit of a lie because it isn't i think maybe um brisbane area queensland that yeah that, that's probably like warm area oh yeah and north northern territory and stuff that's probably warm but a lot of the other cities the main cities like the bigger cities the weather's not that great great for the whole year then the people there um there's quite a lot of racism actually and there's a lot of drunk people in the city center i asked somebody um for a time i lived in this rough area i stayed at my friend's cousin in this considered one of the roughest areas like suburbs area on the on the outskirts it was okay like it's pretty good pretty run down but like i asked people what they thought that was the most dangerous part of Perth was and they said the city centre because people were getting so drunk out of their heads getting into fights and stuff like that that it's like pretty dangerous and it's similar to the UK it was getting like that before I left and then like there's stories of people on the bus being racist and stuff and that was a lot I thought there was a lot of racism as this one thing that shocked me about Australia was um there's a lot of racism towards the aboriginals I couldn't believe it like they have like nicknames for them and stuff like that that's terrible like uh, they thought it was funny but like that was quite shocking um a lot of it seemed quite old-fashioned it's like where england was like 20 years ago that kind of vibe some of it sometimes so there was that there's oh yeah there's but these these people called bogans uh or cashed up bogans bogans were the term name for australia it was look at on google australia Australian people that don't have a that have an unsophisticated they talk and look unsophisticated or something it's like equivalent to a chaff in the UK you probably don't know what that is but someone was a bit rough or something like that but that was pretty cool <laughs> I thought it was pretty cool because I started wearing bogan clothes and stuff which was quite cool he's like the flannel shirt and stuff and the baseball cap so I started wearing that for a while um so yeah so that but overall like it was a good place um but it was very family orientated i found it very clean a lot of it was very clean and like and nice and barbecues on the near the beach but they had all these rules like you're not even that allowed to have a barbecue with fire because it could start a bush fire so it was like hot plates instead it was like kind of ironic there Australia's a fa- Australia's famous for barbecues but you're not allowed to have a proper barbecue and there was like kids very kids orientated family orientated so that was one of the reasons why I left I'll discuss that at the end um so then finding finding a job in Australia um 
I had a, I lined up an interview the last day, like two days after I landed, and um, that went okay, but I didn't get the job. And they've actually that company have actually since been become one of the best companies in that area. They're doing like, all the big apartment towers. They were quite small when I had an interview. They were tiny, but now they're like famous for doing the biggest apartment buildings in in Western Australia. Um, but anyway, I didn't get that job for some reason then i had then i had quite a a few interviews come in i don't know why i think it was the money thing i think um i was asking for like more money than um they thought i was like look comparing my uk salary and i was like equivalent to that and a bit more i was asking for 70 or eighty thousand. i think australia i think it was I can't really remember exactly, but I think seventy or eighty thousand Australian dollars, sorry, uh, uh, per year, and that's what I was saying at the interviews. And they were, I think that was putting them off. And I had quite a few interviews. And I went to Hayes. I was saying Hayes Montrose, which is a famous agency. They were pretty useless. They didn't help me. Then I had a few interviews, and I I started to guess. I started to understand the place a bit. I started to un- knew a lot of the companies. I had. a loads of interviews then some agency called me and they wanted to meet me to like potential like jobs and stuff this really pissed me off um i met these two two ladies they were saying they were from a job recruitment agency for architects sat down like had a coffee with them i told them loads of information i told them everything about perth it's like like they didn't know anything about Perth, what was going on. Told them about all my interviews, told them about who I'm seeing, um, told them about what they're looking for, and then they didn't fucking tell me anything. I was like, I was so pissed off afterwards. Like, I've just arrived in Australia, like, a couple of weeks. These recruitment agencies based in Australia are supposed to get architects a job, and they, I know more about what's going on in the area than they do like they're kept asking me who do you have an interview with and what kind of work are they doing like jesus christ they, i gave them everything on a plate they didn't tell me shit and they didn't even call me afterwards i called them they go oh you got any jobs and interviews lined up for me it's like nothing it's like i was just doing all right on my own without them like what a waste of time and like just that you have to be careful with recruitment agencies they just they're just fishing a lot of the time they're just fishing for information f- from you um oh that's pissed me off so then i had more interviews and then then i started to get a bit desperate because no one offered me a job then i started lowering my salary a bit and then um this one on healthcare came in because i had a lot of experience on healthcare architecture so i got a job at this healthcare special architect company I won't mention the name, but they were pretty good. But it was like healthcare because I had a bit of experience in the UK on healthcare. Um, some healthcare architecture firm employed me. So I worked there for about two years, I think, coming off two years. So now going on to like the work life and money. So they offered me, this is the salary I got. I think it was, I think I remember it now. It's like $65,000 per year, which is pretty shit. That you get, I think it's plus 10%. It's like a pension. What do they call it? I can't remember what they call it. It's an Australian term. Super or something like superannuation or something they call it. So you get a like a you get the sixty five thousand per year plus the superannuation, which ten percent probably whatever is like another three or four thousand a year um goes towards this it goes in this pension fund. Um so that was the salary. And then minus tax don't forget so it's like 30 percent is like minus off that for tax <laughs> you're only getting like what like sixty thousand or something a year which were but the best thing about australia <laughs> is you get paid every two weeks which is fantastic you never seen that before you never got that in uk or anything so you're getting paid every every so often so you you feel you feel good it's like happy you know waiting a whole month to get paid it's like it completely sucks um every two weeks is just fantastic they should do that everywhere in the world definitely i think so that that was really good and then then friday nights friday after works they would have 
drinks in the office and you would never get that in the uk um you wouldn't it will be against the law or something to bring a beer or some wine in the office like oh no 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 everyone just goes down the pub and spends fucking loads of money but um australia they bring like the beers in the office they have a table friday like four o'clock or five o'clock they'll have beers wine cheese pizzas and stuff there's one company i work for um, they got pizzas and beer and wine like at four or five o'clock every Friday. And um, God, I would eat so much pizza and drink so much beer. And then I would work. Um, I was getting paid. Um, this is another company I worked for. I, I got paid per hour. So, <laughs> so I would work Sunday mornings and there'd be like beer left over from the night bef- the day before. <laughs> and I would like take it my car and put it there and take it home i'd like shit loads of beer and i'll just like grab it and like stick it in my car and I'd drive home with it and drink drink it when i got home um so that was the second company i worked for so after i worked for that um i ended up in healthcare again the thing is with australia it was it was too casual um the the work life i don't know if it's because i um only just worked there, but they were all saying to me at the interviews, oh, you need local experience. Oh, no, is it? You need local experience, mate. They just say that as an excuse to, like, fuck with your salary. You need local experience, mate. Okay, and like, I was there, like, I worked, like, two, f- two years at that healthcare firm. It's like, okay, I've got local experience. Now what? Still fucking giving me the same salary. It's just bullshit. Um, so then... Like, so they put and they put you on these um, contracts because this is after GFC. They didn't want to uh, employ you as like a permanent position. So there was all these like permanent position people working in the office, and they would do fuck all. There was this guy. He was, I was working on the same project with him. He was doing ceiling plans. That's all he was doing: ceiling plans. It's like doing ceiling plans for like six months on this hospital. It's like, haven't you done them yet? It's just, he was just like pissing around. And then there's me, like, I got, it was the contract role, it's like contract. So like, it was like a, I think it was only a three month, four, a three or four month contract with possibility of extension. And they're, they're, they're shits because what they did, like, after the four months contract, they wouldn't say anything. You just come into work and you just continue working. So they wouldn't give you another contract. And then you'd work there. I'd be, I was work. Ended up working there like a year, was it? I think over a year. Like, yeah, one year. And then after about one year, like the director comes in the office, and goes, "Ah, oh, sorry, we haven't got much work. We're cutting back staff. Um, you've got a week." Well, that was it. You were like, so you like going in after four months. You going in, pay as you go all the time. And then suddenly you just get told like, oh, sorry, you're not going to work it. And you don't, because you contract, you're not going to get paid off or, or anything. So I had to find a new job. But the good thing about um, Australia, um, I say with any company really, I was by chance told someone in the office and they like literally they called somebody. And he goes, oh, I'll get your job, mate. And he called someone. He gave me a contact detail, someone on the other side of town. And I called him, got an interview straight away for this other firm. And um, around that time, I was doing a Revit course because I knew I needed to learn Revit. And my company I was working for, they didn't use it. So I just finished a Revit course. It was like it was called Revit Essentials. One day a week for four weeks, I think. So four days, four full days. I think it was just slightly after I left that job. And then I had an interview for this other job. And they were, they were working on like this huge multi-million dollar Billion, I think it was a billion dollar hospital in um, Western Australia. And it was the biggest BIM project in the world at the time. That's what Autodesk said. And I just finished this Revit course and I went for the interview and said, yeah, I know Revit. I used it in the UK, but I haven't used it for a while. Just been on this Revit course, blah, blah, blah. They needed someone with healthcare experience. I've just been working in Western Australia for like uh, a year. So I got that job and the, I think the girl that was leaving was also a British architect so I re- kind of replaced her um, so I got put on that project for a while but it was such a big project 
And it was the same kind of thing as well. Contract, three months, then pay as you go. But I was getting paid per hour. Now, this was good because um, they had these timesheets there and everyone was, like, logging in as many hours as they could. And they told us we can work on Sundays if we want to and Saturdays. So I, I'd come in, like I said before, and work on Sundays or Saturdays and I'd take the beer from the day before and I, I'd work I didn't work all day I'd just go in and for a few hours log it down take some beer and leave I had an extra three or four hours and I think it was double the time as well because it's a weekend so that was pretty good so I, I racked up some money there that was really good and then you'd put in 10 hours a day or something sometimes you would just like wing it add an extra hour here and there like they wouldn't know so you uh, that was good about that um and that was the same thing. But this time I learned from the last job because I, I think it was a three or four month con four month contract. And when I, I took uh, when I ran out of that four months, um, I, I started looking for a new job because um, I knew I didn't want to do what happened last time. Just pay as you go. So, um, but that was a that was good experience working there. It was um, the culture was quite good. They're quite friendly um there's good vibe in the office especially like the friday afternoons and stuff similar to the uk that's why i want um one of the reasons why i left no one really wears suits or ties but that was the same in the uk like even went for interviews you never wear a suit or tie um but you feel more i think the way the australians speak is a bit more relaxed informal than it is in the UK, you know, it's like, how you doing, mate? Stuff like that. So it's like, good day, mate. It's like, it's like pretty, you feel more comfortable and relaxed, I think. So that second firm, that was a big hospital I was working on. But it was so big that you like put in segments. That's the thing, you work in, it's like the UK, it was the same shit I was doing in the UK. I wasn't really designing anything with both firms, you just, drawing up doing the construction stuff all the time not much concept work at all um so the first firm was just yeah construction details most of the time and then the second firm i was doing space planning a space planning team it was such a multi it's a billion dollar hospital that so big the bim project was so big they had separated so many teams and it was so oh my god they had so much BIM procedures. It was completely BIM organized. It was looking back, it was completely bullshit. They had like one team doing families for Revit, one team doing doors, one team doing space planning. Uh, that's what I was doing. One team doing this, one team doing that, one on that section, one team doing walls, one team doing ceiling. That's friggin' bullshit, man. Like it's like so BIM organized. It's like, uh, like you couldn't if if I wanted. I was doing space planning, so like for, like the plans and stuff, and mostly internal layout. So if I wanted a like furniture, instead of drawing the furniture, I would like send it. I'd do a hand sketch and send it to the family team, so they would make a BIM family for that furniture, like a desk or something. It's like every, uh, that's. It's a way of doing it, yeah, but like, yeah, so that's how that worked. So then came after the four months, I started looking for a new job because I didn't want to end up what happened last time where um, they suddenly say, oh, you got a week. So I found another job and it was quite good. Um, it's, I, I wanted to get out of healthcare and um, one of the directors was British, which kind of got, got me in the door, RIBA helped. All these interviews helped. All my all the RIBA helped on all my interviews, I think, because I put it on my top of my CV, and we talked about it at the interview. But the third practice I worked for in Perth, um, one of the directors who was British, he was RIBA, and then was a South African architect. They were two two directors, but the owner of the company was Australian. That's how they run it. But I don't know how much <laughs> work he did. The other guys were doing most of the work, so I joined that company. This doing a um, multi-story, high-story high, high um, office building, which I wanted to work on. So uh, I enjoyed that. It was a smaller firm as well. Uh, both the previous firms were quite large firms, at least at least 50 people. 
Um, so that's considered large for an architect firm. But this one was like 10 people or less, which I realized is more what I enjoy. It's more of a vibe. And you're working on everything. You're not just working on, um, you know, space planning, doors, whatever. So they had... Um, they did it. They didn't have bin managers and stuff. It's just like there was a guy there. He just did it all. He didn't have any. No one had any problems with bin. We just do it yourself. So that was f that was fine. Um, if I had bin questions, I just asked uh, one of the guys in the office. He, uh, we just did it ourselves. They had no problem with that kind of stuff. So I worked on. Then I worked. So I worked there for a bit on an office project. Um, so then, uh, what should I go on to now? And then I, I left, and because um, the Tanzania project came along, but like I talk about visas for a bit. So I was on a migration visa. There was a working holiday visa I applied for, but I didn't use that because the working ho the permanent residential visa came in. So you can apply for a migration visa. That took two years to go through. It takes a long time now. A lot of paperwork involved in Australia. Everything's bureaucratic, so much paperwork. And a lot of hard copies, not just digital. So that you can get, if you're under 30, I think you can get a holiday working visa. You can work there for a year and then extend it. I had a migration visa, but I had to stay there two years to extend it. But then I had this um, Tanzania thing came out, came up after after a year nearly two years so I didn't quite stay there two years before I left so I screwed that up um, they might extend it if I ever go back I'm not sure but then around that time just before I had the Tanzania interview for this job I got now because I moved to Tanzania I I tried to get um, I was thinking of staying in Australia and um, I was trying to get um, registered in Australia and those guys were complete fuckers um so um, I I did I was willing to follow all the procedures, right? So something like fourteen. Oh, that's ridiculous. I'm sure it's like fourteen or eight copies. Fourteen copies of your portfolio, your hard copies, student portfolios had to send to Canberra. So I was a, I'm a British architect. I want to apply to be an Australian architect. So um, there's two ways of doing it. You do it through experience, or you do it through education. So I decided to do it through education. Now, if I went back, I'd do it through experience. I think it'd be a lot easier, but I did it through education and I had to send like 14 copies of my hard, hard copies of my portfolio to Canberra. And then they'd ask for an interview. And then if I passed the interview, then I had to do exams as well. Like, geez. So I was willing to do the interview. I had the interview, showed some of my work and stuff. This is AIA, Australian Institute of Architects. And they they said my edge, they didn't, I don't think they liked it. And then they started, they started asking me questions about my uh, degree in the UK. They're saying, you've got a master's. I said, yeah. And he goes, oh, so how did you get the master's then? Like, oh, you just did that and blah, blah, blah. I go, no, it's like a full on master's. I did three years, blah, blah, blah. And they, they were like trying to put down the, it's like they're jealous of the UK or something. <laughs> they were like putting the UK down. They didn't, I don't think they liked a British guy trying to come and become an Australian architect. And then I showed, I was showing them some projects and they were asking me questions about projects at university this was, like how many years ago? It must have been like at least five years ago. I couldn't remember them much at the time. They asked me questions I was like, are there any setbacks on this project? I was like, uh, no, not really. It was a university project and stuff like that. So like uh, after the interview, they, I got a letter saying like, my British education is not as equivalent to the Australian education and architecture. I was like, I was like, what the hell are you talking about? Um, so I wrote a, I wrote a letter to the Australian, um, ACA, Ar Australian the Ar Accreditation of Architects Australia, something like that, AACA. Oh, God, something like that. I wrote them a letter. They're the ones who rejected it. But there was the Australian Institute of Architects that gave me the interview. So they sent me the letter. Sent back, say, how can you do this? Like, how can you say this when um, I'm a registered architect in the UK? I've, 
I've um, had experience. I've done the education system. I'm registered at RIBA and everything. Your education system is based on the British one. How can you say the education system I've done is not equivalent to the Australian one? So I wrote them a letter. I had to wait like months. They wrote back and said, oh, your appeal has been um, accepted. We'd like to ask you for another interview. Please send another 14 copies of your portfolio. I was like, what the fuck? Another 14 copies of hard copies of my portfolio. That's a hell of a lot of money and a hell of a lot of fucking hassle trying to do with that. It's coloured copies as well. So then I got this interview for a job in Tanzania. So I thought, so that came along and um, I just took that. Um, so w the reasons why I left Australia was like, um, the money wasn't as good as I thought it would be. It's more or less similar to the UK. I mean, a lot of things were similar to the UK. That's why, why I left. It wasn't different enough. Just the weather and the beach life um, and stuff was better. But um, the weather was still had the seasons, which I wasn't a fan of, the cold and stuff. Um, so uh, the money was similar. It was the same kind of shit like everyone was like trying to buy a house uh, get a mortgage everyone's like no one they really had any money they were getting loans um for, loans for a house loans for cars they had these brand new cars and like they were on loan on credit they didn't own the car really and then they had insurance like it made me laugh i had this i bought this second hand car like full like off completely bought there's people like getting loans for car and their car gets break down and they'll just get their um what's it called is it insurance to get a new car or something it's like if it just breaks down it's just crazy everyone's just like taking loans in australia it's just ridiculous they're getting loans for like a million dollar house and stuff and then just end up paying it off the real estate in australia was crazy Worse than the UK, it's like drilled into your brain. You must have a house. Jeez. But the uh, other culture differences was like, uh, one thing that shocked me was um, tradies, people who are not um, didn't go to university, they were getting quite decent money, like as much money as me. I went to university for like five years, but tradies were earning decent money in Australia. And everything was expensive to build because the tradies... The construction workers, everything were getting paid really well. So, um, so the the similarities in the UK for Australia that kind of put me off a little bit, and um, the weather and stuff, and the money for the jobs that put me off. It wasn't. It was. I ended. It was like worked there two years. It's like shit. I'm doing the same thing in the UK. I'm like trying to save up for a bloody house and like um, just living off paychecks and. Um, yeah, I mean, what could I do next? Like, just find a wife and, like, settle down. I didn't really want that. And it was a really family-orientated place. Like, it was like, everyone was, like, having families and kids and everything. I didn't really want that yet. Um, I didn't want a bit more excitement in my life. It's like, it felt like it was going from the most exciting city in the world, Bangkok, to, like, one of the most boringest cities in the world. It's very nice. Yeah, like... Um, Australia was very nice, but like it just felt a little bit boring, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so then this interview to Tanzania came up, and like that was just bringing the excitement again. And like I liked working in developing country because I'd working work experience in developing country when I was at uni and stuff. So yeah, so they offered me a job, and so that's why I left. But like the only regret I got was. Um, the visa I didn't stay two years so I lost the migration visa I think there's a possibility of extending it um, now if I ever went back um, but I would have to move there permanently and stay there coming on to the lessons learned for anyone who wants to work in Australia as an architect just be aware of um, it's very similar to the UK the, the beach culture is different yeah and the weather's slightly different um, but the like the work experience is still similar apart from the Friday night thing Friday uh, drinks thing um, and then um, the money yeah the money's not ma that great 
in Australia, like people think, oh, it's just the same as like the UK. You don't make much money, still loads of tax and everything. And you're paying bills for God knows what. I was quite lucky. I was like staying at friends. Um, I hardly had any bills, so I saved a lot of money. But like they're really into like, oh, you must have a house. Get loans for houses, cars, uh, gyms, rents. All these bills, they really want you to have all these freaking bills. They're begging you to have a mobile phone country. It's like the UK, like they're like that. Oh, it just made me sick. So, like, And the town centre was similar to the UK. So, yeah, I didn't want that. I left the UK for something slightly different. Um, um, so, yeah, so if you're thinking again, Australia, it's nice, but um, it's, it's family orientated. So maybe if you settle down, you'd really like it. Um, this is, don't forget, this is based on my personal experience. I'm not being judgmental for anything. This is just my experience being there. And I was only there a couple of years. So I think less, just less than short of two years, I was living and working there. So so I hope you enjoy this podcast. And um, next one, I'll then I move to Tanzania. So I'll talk to that, talk about that on the next one. So ciao.